probably get most excited about automation as it eliminates mundane repetitive tasks from my task list. So when APIs came out, I was really happy to integrate two apps in the cloud with the help of an integrator. But then the missing piece was the desktop to cloud integration. So while I was using the desktop based automation, like Hazel, Keyboard Maestro and Typinator, none of them bridged the gap between the desktop and the cloud. So when Apple announced Mac OS Monterey and talked about bringing shortcuts to the Mac desktop, that got me back to the drawing board. Though shortcuts hadn't yet come to the desktop, it was still available on the mobile and on the iPad. So when I dug deeper, I found a way to use shortcuts to capture notes inside of the mobile and push that into Notion. My success led to a Eureka moment and I shared that with you guys as a teaser in my earlier video. Many of you wanted to see how it works and how you could adapt it into your workflow. So that's what I'm going to show you in this video. But why would I want to use shortcuts? For starters, shortcuts eliminate the need for an integrator like Zapier or Automate.io. Secondly, the handoff time between the desktop and the cloud is almost zero after you push the transaction. So in effect, this saves me money, allows me to test my use cases infinitely and integrate this really well into my existing workflow and also view things immediately. To understand this better, we need to understand what Apple shortcuts are. If you use an iPhone and you don't have Apple's shortcuts yet, you can download this straight from the App Store. It's free. Apple shortcuts are a quick way to get one or more tasks done. I remember my first use case. When I boarded the airplane, I had to send an SMS to my mom and wife that I had boarded and I was ready to take off. They lived in different cities and I had very little time in the plane. So with the shortcut, I sent two simultaneous messages at the same time. Similarly, when I landed, I had another shortcut programmed to tell them that I landed safely. In the use case we have for today, we want to capture the main idea and a little bit of the description about the idea and push that into Notion immediately. The created time property within Notion time stamps this automatically. So you really don't need to add more data entry at this point in time. When you're back at your desk with time to think, you can appropriately action this and get this integrated into your main workflow. So Kanban is a proven workflow method which passes through different process steps. Arguably the most powerful Kanban method for time management is getting things done. Now famously called GTD as well that David Allen explained with the same name. Inside my Kanban I have an ideas corner which houses all of these small notes that I capture with Apple shortcuts that I deal with later. I'm about to explain things that need to be done only once for the integration that you're about to set up. Before you start working on the Apple shortcut itself, you need to create a new Notion integration. So you go into settings and then into integrations and then develop your own integration. Name the integration and associate it with the workspace that you want to connect to. Once you create the integration, you get an internal integration token that you can see with the show button. This token is only for yourself, which you will use in many of these integrations. Copy this down on your notepad. For quick access, don't share this token with others, but only for use cases that you want to use it with. Now you want this integration to work with a specific database. So the permissions for integration need to be created at the given database level. So let's first create a fresh database with two properties, name and create a date which will show you when the record was created. The title of the note will be pushed to the name property and the details that you entered will be pushed into the note page to keep it neat. To make sure that you see the latest entries first, sort the database by the created date field in the descending order. You want to house this database where you tend to look at them most. Now let's add the permission for the integration for this database. Go to the share option and invite the integration that you just created. When you click on the invite, you will see the name of the integration that you just created. By default, it goes into can edit mode, which is where you want to leave it. 
Now you can edit this database with this integration. Every database inside of Notion has a specific name. That specific name is the database ID. So let's look at how you can get this database ID. You can also find the same instructions inside the Notion documentation. To view the entire link as is displayed on this page, you need to copy this onto a notepad. If you notice, it starts with HTTPS and goes on to a string of characters. Eliminate the first part of the string till the slash after Notion and eliminate everything from the question mark till the end of that string. What remains is your database ID. Now save the database ID and the secret key in a safe place but handy enough for you to copy and paste them from your mobile or your iPad. Now let's build the shortcut. Let's look at this in two parts. Each step is programmed as an action inside of the shortcut. There are five steps in the first part. In step one, you ask for an input from the user. So you create a note with text. To get this option, remember to turn the compose sheet off. In step two, you push this note to a variable called idea. In step three, you prompt the user to add more text explaining the idea with a message. What's your idea? Here, you can leave the default answer to text. In step four, you push this provided input into another variable, inputs. Now in step five, you append the variable inputs to the variable idea. So now the variable idea has both the heading as well as the body. At this moment, you will find that Notes now has a copy of the idea. In the second part, you want to point to Notion. To set this up, you will need to select the web option and look for Get Contents of URL. The base URL to send all API requests is https api.notion.com. This is the URL that Notion has published and you can find further details on this Notion page. I'm leaving links in the description as well. Now since you want to post the information into the Notion area, you choose post as the method. Now let's look at headers and request body. In the header, you have to create a table like what's shown here and insert the secret key after the bearer. In the request body, you need to have three areas that you need to pay attention to. Under parent, you will push the database ID. Under properties, you should make sure that your default field name is the same as what's there in Notion. The layers are actually configured in line with the way the Notion algorithm and the shortcut fetches the data. If you go in, you can set the content to fetch the variable idea. Similarly, the children define what goes into the block, the type, and what goes into the paragraph, which is the inputs variable that finally goes in into the body of the Notion page. In the last part of the script, you choose from contents of the URL and push this into Notion with these options. At the end of this, you test it to see that it works. If you're not yet familiar with shortcuts, I would recommend that you look at some of the examples of creating shortcuts that Apple has pre-created and study them. If you're an Android user, use the same concept to see if you can build this using action blocks. If you're not yet part of this community, do consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay notified of new videos. If you like this video, consider sharing it with your friends. Stay safe, stay healthy, peace.